Before we get into today's edition of Just the Truth, Mike Lindell sent me a note yesterday. He has a special for the six-piece towel set, 25 bucks when you use promo code Joey. Just go to MyPillow.com, use promo code Joey. You'll get the $25 offer on the six-piece towel set, and I promise you, these will be the most comfortable, the most absorbent towels that you own. MyPillow.com, use promo code Joey. Get the six-piece towel set for just $25. Thanks for joining me in the PhD Weight Loss and Nutrition Studio to lose weight for the last time. Visit MyPhDWeightLoss.com. I told you we'd be back. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. It's Joey Hudson. I wanted to name it the Joey Hudson Bill, but you know, they don't allow you to name put names on bills, <laughs> but I wanted to call it the Joey Hudson Bill because I know, I know that one's been near and dear to you for a number of years. That's how it's done. Let your voice be heard. And the truth shall set you free. Here's Joey Hudson. Finally, Vice President Kamala Harris spoke with reporters for the first time yesterday since becoming the presumptive Democrat presidential nominee almost three weeks ago. And it was just a few minutes as she uh, talked with a press gaggle en route to one of her campaign stops. We'll give you the details of that. And a major RV retailer is fighting in Northern California County over its right to display a giant American flag. It's not the first time. That camping world has fought local officials to fly their massive American flags. They always win. I'll give you the details on this as well. Former President Donald Trump said yesterday that he's agreed to three debates against Vice President Kamala Harris, including one hosted by ABC News that he had previously cast doubt upon. Meanwhile, Ms. Harris says she will not agree to additional debates until she sees if Trump shows up on September the 10th for the ABC debate. We have the details on the debate of the debates. Vice President Kamala Harris spoke with reporters for the first time yesterday since she became the presumptive Democrat presidential nominee almost three weeks ago. Uh, She talked to the media on the tarmac at Detroit Metropolitan Wayne County Airport after a campaign event in Michigan and after former President Trump held a lengthy news conference at his Mar-a-Lago estate Yesterday afternoon, uh, Trump talked with reporters over an hour as he answered any question that was asked. Now, this has been brewing because the longer Kamala Harris waited, the more intense the debate became on whether or not she was purposely avoiding having a news conference, doing interviews. She was kind of taking a page out of Joe Biden's campaign book, wasn't she? Uh, avoid the, the media at all costs. So it was getting to the point to where she almost could not avoid or, or could not uh, continue to just ignore the press because even her own friends in the press were starting to ask questions. Harris responded uh, to the criticism about not doing a formal press conference or a a wide-ranging interview since she's become the nominee. She said, I've talked to my team. I want us to get an interview scheduled before the end of the month. Oh, well, that's nice of you. Today's what? August the 8th? So Sometime before the end of the month, we'll get one in. Uh, The vice president also touched on an agreement with Trump to conduct at least the one presidential debate prior to the election day. She said, well, I'm glad that he's finally agreed to a debate on September 10th, adding that she would be willing to schedule additional debates if Trump shows up on the 10th. Now, the problem with that is we learned yesterday from Trump during his press conference, he said that he would participate in three different debates, one on Fox News, one on NBC, and the one on ABC that they both seem to be agreeing will take place on September the 10th. Uh, Trump had said, He's, he's always said that he would participate in the ABC debate. It was originally set to be with Joe Biden, of course. This was the one that they had uh, agreed upon uh, when, when they agreed upon the one in June as well. The one that e- e- eventually led to Joe Biden dropping out of the race after Donald Trump just, just basically slaughtered him in that debate. Or actually, I, I guess I should say uh, Joe Biden committed suicide because he, he slaughtered himself. Um, Harris said when asked about Trump backing out of 
the debate in, uh, with ABC, she said, I'm beyond trying to speculate about how he thinks and, and giving that cackle of a laugh of hers. Uh, Harris also addressed Republicans who questioned Minnesota Governor Tim Walz, his uh, military record. Uh, that has just gone viral. The, the whole idea, this, the stolen valor, uh, we'll, we'll get into that in more detail. But uh, uh, Harris said, listen, I praise anyone who has presented themselves to serve our country, and I think that we all should. Um, the, the controversy, of course, was over Walls engaging in, again, what veterans, and I have a, several veterans, uh, veteran friends whom I've talked to about this, and they said, absolutely, it's, it's stolen valor. Uh, J.D. Vance warned the American people not to fall for the Minnesota governor's stolen valor garbage, as Vance described it. Harris's stop at the tarmac came, of course, after Trump uh, had had gone on the attack with the vice president for not taking on the record questions from reporters. And I think that probably was part of the reason Trump spent so much time with the press today was he was proving his point that he has unlimited or has granted unlimited access pretty much to the press. He'll stand there and talk with you for an hour or more. Because he loves it. He, he loves the engagement. Doesn't, and, and it's not that he's only choosing friendly, uh, friendly members of the media. I'm not sure there, other than Fox News, I'm not sure there are many who you consider as being friendly to Donald Trump. But Trump doesn't care because he answers with the truth. He doesn't have anything to hide. Whereas you have Kamala Harris, and now add, add to that Tim Walz, and they're both trying to remember, well, what, how did I answer this last time? Be- because they tell so many lies, they got to try to remember how they answered the question before. Uh, now, Harris has had a number of opportunities to have an extended uh, audience with journalists. Remember, she would not appear at the National Association of Black Journalists Convention in sh- Chicago last week where Trump made headlines for a question-and-answer session. Again, yesterday was 18 days that she had gone without holding a formal press conference, and we kind of got into the point to where the press, they were doing a countdown. I mean, Fox News had a counter on their website counting the days, as they should. By the way, the Harris campaign altered the biography of her running mate, Governor Walsh, they, they very quietly, when no, no fanfare, uh, changed it. Uh, initially, he said he was a retired command sergeant major. Retired command sergeant major. When actually, he's, uh, he served as a command sergeant major, but when he retired, he was demoted. It's been updated since to say that he served as a command sergeant major, uh, and they make a distinction that he his rank was changed when he retired because he didn't finish the educational part of it. He left before he w- was fully before he fully became the sergeant major. Vice President Kamala Harris announced. Uh, Waltz as her running mate on Tuesday, and boy, it has been a bumpy ride ever since. A lot of scrutiny that I'm not sure he anticipated. Of course, they had to have known some of this, right? Surely Eric Holder, who uh, who did was doing the backgrounds for the vice president, surely Eric Holder discovered this, don't you think? If he didn't, I hope he doesn't charge for his services, I hope he's not paid for it because he, he did a fairly poor job. Uh, Vice President Kamala Harris um, has defended her running mate. Uh, she, she's kind of suggested that we're getting a little too much in the weeds, that we're being a little too picky. Uh, but look, stolen valor is stolen valor. Uh, when Waltz left the guard, he had achieved the rank of command sergeant major. Now, now that, that's the key, command sergeant major. But he was reduced in ranks months after retiring, 
leaving him as a master sergeant. There's a difference from a command sergeant major and a master sergeant. National Guard officials have said that he retired before fulfilling requirements for the position, including some coursework at the U.S. Army Sergeant Major Academy. The subsequent lower rank was due to benefit requirements and a technicality, they said. Now, Republicans, of course, J.D. Vance says that it's stolen valor. Uh, Senator Vance said, do not pretend to be something that you're not. Um, Vance's uh, comments uh, about Waltz came um, when Waltz talked about gun control, uh, saying that the governor uses military history in an attempt to uh, push gun restrictions and warned Americans not to believe Governor Waltz when he lies about his military service. We can make sure that those weapons of war that I carried in war is the only place where those weapons are at. He has not spent a day in a combat zone. What bothers me about Tim Waltz is the stolen valor garbage. Do not pretend to be something that you're not. It has been a rocky start for Governor Walsh. You agree? Hope you'll join the conversation today. 864-477-JOEY, 864-477-5639. Send your comments to the Furman Ford text line. You can leave a quick voice message, and your emails are always welcome, Joey at joeyhudson.com. Joey Hudson here. I was talking to a good friend the other day, and he mentioned that he has started taking the weight loss injection drug that was initially made to treat type 2 diabetes. He said he's losing weight, but the day after he takes the injection, he is so sick he can't leave the house. That got me thinking. Most of us go on a weight loss journey so that we can feel better and get healthy. Folks, losing weight should not make you sick. I can tell you firsthand, four years ago when I started PhD weight loss and nutrition, I was never hungry or agitated. I never felt sick. In fact, I felt great the very first first week. The PhD side effects are better sleep, more energy, smaller clothes, and a general sense of well-being. Getting healthy should not make you sick, and it shouldn't make you dependent on a drug either. Simply put, PhD is freedom. You will not be dependent on a drug because there are no drugs. You'll learn to eat for your body, and you won't gain the weight back. They have a lifetime maintenance program, and PhD teaches you to trust yourself and your knowledge. Call them today, 864-252-4925. Find them online at myphdweightloss.com. That's 864-252-4925. The grieving mom of a young man who was killed in combat, the same combat where Governor Tim Waltz was supposed to have fought, she says he took the coward's way out. And it looks like we have made headway in scheduling some debates. Former President Donald Trump announcing yesterday that he has agreed to three debates. Vice President Kamala Harris has uh, agreed to one, saying she'll consider the others if, in fact, Donald Trump shows up for the first. So all week... Or, or since Tuesday, when Kamala Harris let it be known that Minnesota Governor Tim Waltz would be joining her on the campaign trail, uh, they rolled things out for him in a very elaborate way, promoting him as America's governor, that he's, he's the perfect candidate to go alongside Kamala Harris and to seek our support to become vice president. It's kind of unraveled on him, though, as each day new revelations have come forward. Uh, yesterday was no different. Minnesota Governor Tim Walz took the coward's way out when he retired months before his National Guard unit was deployed to Iraq, according to a grieving mom whose teen son was killed by a roadside bomb during that deployment. Sergeant Kyle Miller was his name. He's 19 years old. He was part of Governor Walsh's 1st Battalion, the 125th Field Artillery Unit. He died in Iraq in 2006, just as the Democrat was serving his freshman term in Minnesota's 1st Congressional District. Uh, that's when he retired from the National Guard to run for Congress. The unit's sergeant, 1st Class David Berry, was killed a year later. David Berry is the one who took over the command when Walsh left, when he retired. Uh, Miller's mom, Kathy Miller, told the Daily Mail, my son wasn't even 21 years old. He couldn't even buy alcohol, yet he took the step to serve our country while Walsh found the best way he could to run away. It was the coward's way out, she said. Uh, remember, Walsh officially retired as a command sergeant major in the Minnesota National Guard after 24 years in May of 2005 to launch his congressional campaign. Two months later, 
The 125th received an alert order for mobilization as part of Operation Iraqi Freedom. The unit mobilized that October, that fall. Kathy Miller says it makes you wonder if he will bow out in some manner and not accomplish the job he's supposed to get done. It's a valid question because when you quit on one thing, you're very likely to quit on something else. Just as J.D. Vance has made the argument this week that he lied about his service, if he lies about that, what else will he lie about? Uh, Young Miller joined the Minnesota National Guard when he was a junior in high school, according to his mom. He graduated in June 2005, deployed to Iraq after he completed basic training that, that, that year, that summer. Uh, He was 19, was four months into his deployment when he was killed by a roadside bomb in Balad on June 29, 2006, according to the West Central Tribune, uh, their report at the time. Uh, His mom said, my son stepped up to the plate. All our sons stepped up, uh, insinuating, of course, all of those except Tim Walls. The mom told the Daily Mail she's never heard from Walls or his office. The 125th suffered another blow the, the following February, just some months later, when their squad leader, uh, Barry, was killed by an IED that struck his Humvee. Uh, Barry was 37. He was a member of the Kansas National Guard who had been with the 1-125th since, since his deployment or, or mo- mobilization for deployment in October 2005. In 2005, Barry had been awarded the Soldier's Medal, the highest peacetime honor, for pulling an unconscious man from a burning pickup truck on a remote highway near Wichita. Barry's family would not comment for the story, according to the New York Post. Um, It's going to be interesting to see how this plays out. If you're a veteran, I would love to hear your take on this. Send me an email, joey at joeyhudson.com. Let me know how you feel about this. Now, I've had some friends of mine who are veterans, and they don't like it at all. And, and they agree with J.D. Vance that it's stolen valor. Do you agree? If, if you're a veteran, uh, does this bother you? Do you, uh, do you look at this and think if he lies about this, he'll lie about anything? And, and the thing is, he's been lying about it. For years now, nobody's called him out on it until now. And and I guess maybe that's why he didn't think anything about it, because he's gotten away with it for all these years. I guess he thought, well, no different running for vice president. He doesn't understand how the national media works. He doesn't understand the scrutiny that he's going to be under. Just like the video that surfaced this week, too. Now, now keep in mind, we've kind of we've known about this man since Tuesday. (laughs) This is all taking place in what? Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. I mean, four days? Three days. Three days. We've learned all of this. And I got to believe that uh, that Trump's ops operation and some of the other political organizations that will be doing background checks and be doing research, I got a feeling they're just getting warmed up. But it is troublesome that these things are, are coming out so quickly and this early. D- did he just think that they wouldn't come out? Or has he been telling th- the lie about his rank so long that he believes it himself? You know, sometimes people do that. People tell the same story over and over again until they start believing the story, even though it started out as a complete lie, as a complete falsehood. Well, it does look like we're going to have some debates. Former President Donald Trump yesterday said he's agreed to three debates, including one hosted by ABC News, the one that was previously scheduled with Trump and Joe Biden for September the 10th. The other three debates, one would be scheduled uh, with Fox News on September the 4th, the week prior to the ABC. The following one would be September 25th on NBC, according to Trump's team. Uh, He was uh, held a news conference at Mar-a-Lago. He said in his statement, so we have those three dates and those networks. They're very anxiously awaiting that date and those dates. We have spoken to the heads of the network, and it's all been confirmed. Now, Harris, not so fast. 
Kamala Harris says she agrees to the ABC News debate. Uh, Not quite sure about the other ones. She said she would agree to the other ones or consider the other ones after he shows up on September the 10th. You think that's the way it's done? We'll see. Hope you'll join the conversation today. 864-477-JOEY. 864-477-5639. Send your comments to the Furman Ford text line. You can leave a quick voice message and your emails are always welcome, Joey at joeyhudson.com. Whether you're replacing a broken appliance or maybe you're just upgrading, you're totally remodeling the kitchen. When it's time to get those new appliances, when you're ready for them, you don't want to have to wait weeks or even months to get started using them, right? Well, that's not the case when you shop with my friends at Discounted Appliance Warehouse. With over 11,000 square feet and 1,500 appliances at any, any given time, you can buy today and use today quite often. I'm talking about shopping with my friends at Discounted Appliance warehouse in Pickens. It's worth the short drive over to Pickens. Jeff, Johnny, Kyle, the whole team over there, they'll take good care of you. They have an award-winning service department, expert installation, extended warranties, and a discounted appliance warehouse. They treat you like family. You're more than just a credit card swipe to all the team over there. Discounted appliance warehouse. They're proud to offer Speed Queen, the only washer and dryers with manufacturer's warranties that cover parts and labor. You owe it to yourself if you're looking for a new appliance, to head over to Pickens to Discounted Appliance Warehouse online at dawpickens.com, dawpickens.com. Uh, one more final thing on the whole debate on the debates. Uh, what do you think Trump should do if, in fact, she does not agree, and, and she being uh, Kamala Harris, of course, if she doesn't agree to the Fox News debate and the NBC debate, should he go forward? with the one with ABC on uh, September the 10th? Is it even an option that she does not participate in the other two debates that she, that she just holds out on ABC? I know that's probably what she wants to do. And she's, she's walked around this week uh, with, with all the bravado and saying, well, you know, I'll, I'll, I, I, I'm, I'm happy to debate it. Bring it on. When I got to believe deep down inside, she's terrified. And if she's terrified, imagine her staff. Imagine how they feel. They just want to get past the debates and try to limp into November the 5th and, and try to stumble across the finish line. Can, can you imagine working for Kamala Harris and trying to prepare her for a debate? Um. It'll be interesting to see. Uh, really would love to get your take on that. If you believe Trump should go go forward with September the 10th on ABC. Now, keep in mind, the Fox debate that Trump agreed to yesterday is September the 4th. So her argument that, well, she will decide on the other ones after September the 10th, she is purposely going to try to shun Fox News because theirs is set up for September the 4th. So if she's not going to agree to any more until after the 10th, kind of rules Fox News out, right? Wonder if Fox News would give Trump the option of just being there by himself. Give him the hour or whatever, uh, whatever amount of time they have scheduled for this debate. Look, we're going to get so tired of hearing about the debates, it's going to be debate ad nauseum. So just get ready. And speaking of getting tired of hearing about stuff, are you already tired of hearing about polls? <laughs> it's like every day there's a new poll. Now, I bring this to you because I think we need to we need to pay attention to them. But we also need to understand that they're going to fluctuate. There's going to be a lot going on between now and November the 5th. Now, for example, I was having, my, I was having a discussion with my buddy Mike Gallagher uh, yesterday. And he's saying that, that uh, you know, he's just ready to, to move forward, to, to, to get on with the campaign. And for the honeymoon to be over with Kamala Harris. Well, my, my point to Mike, and I'll share with you, is, hey, just, just kind of buckle up because we got to get past the Democrat National Convention in Chicago first. Because get ready, they're going to get a little bump at the at the convention if they don't 
then that's bad news for them. But but that would be very very rare if they do not. The uh, each party and their candidates typically get a little bump uh, g- the week of of their convention, just like we did in, in Milwaukee a few weeks ago. We came out of Milwaukee feeling good, feeling positive. Of course, it was a little bit different because uh, Donald Trump had just survived an, uh, an attempt of, of assassination. I mean, you, you had people probably uh, the closest to, uh, for some Democrats, to offer their support of Donald Trump. Because we, as a, as a nation, I don't think any of us, well, there are probably a few who, won't, who wouldn't mind if Donald Trump, uh, if the assassination had not been uh, successful. But overall, most Americans, although they may not like Donald Trump, they don't want to see, see him harmed, I don't think. So anyway, just get ready because there's so many organizations. And honestly, I don't quite understand this whole polling thing. You know, why, why, do, why does all these organizations do polling? Uh, it, it costs money. They're not inexpensive. And what do they gain from them other than a headline for a day? So yesterday's headline was former president Donald Trump leads vice president Kamala Harris and the field in Georgia, 46 percent to 44 percent, according to a poll released Thursday by the AARP. So the AARP uh, poll for Georgia shows Trump up two percent. That's good news. Seven uh, percent of Georgia voters support a third party candidate. Uh, Harris polls better against Trump in a hypothetical head-to-head race, pulling into a, a dead heat among likely voters at 48 to 48. There were just 3% of likely voters undecided in the full field uh, polling. Now, as you remember, uh, and Bob Ward, part of the bipartisan polling team that conducted the survey, reminded us Georgia was incredibly close in 2020 and is close now. That is, if you believe the results of 2020. He said, you look at this data, given the margin of error, this is a toss up. Uh, Remember, Joe Biden is on record as having winning by 12,670 votes. That was like 0.225 percent of the overall vote. This uh, AARP poll found that 90 percent of black voters over 50 prefer Harris, while just 6 percent favor Trump in Georgia. That's a little bit uh, different than some of the other national polls that show uh, Trump getting a probably the biggest percentage of black vote of any previous uh, Republican presidential candidate in modern history. 50-plus voters prefer Trump over Harris, 53% to 45%, and that makes sense because people who are 50 and above, they've got enough sense. They're, they're paying the bills. They're having to to pay their mortgage bills. They're the ones who are putting fuel in the cars, their cars and their kids' cars. They're the ones buying groceries and and everything else has gone up. 47% of likely voters had a favorable opinion of Trump, while 48% had an unfavorable opinion. Uh, 46% had a favorable opinion of Harris, while 47% had an unfavorable opinion of her. So, again... Most voters in Georgia uh, have a a very similar opinion of both candidates. 79% of all likely Georgia voters are extremely motivated to vote, compared with 88% of voters 50-plus. And that 50-plus age uh, age could, could be the key to this. Because, again, they are enthusiastic, and they'll show up and vote. Now, there's uh, several polls showing that Trump is losing pretty big among young voters, uh, 30 and, y- and younger. And, and that's, that's disturbing. However, I would say that these 50-plus voters are more likely to vote than the less than 30-something voter. Uh, in this same AARP poll, 40, 30% of voters 50-plus think the country is moving in the right direction, while, and this is key, 
67 percent are concerned the nation is headed in the wrong way. That, that's a key, key finding there. Because when you have 67 percent of 50 plus voters saying, oh, no, we're going the wrong way. They're going to be pretty solid. You're not going to change their minds between now and November 5th. In other polls, uh, the Marquette, Wisconsin poll, Trump, Harris in a dead heat. Uh, just a few weeks ago, Trump was leading in, uh, in Wisconsin. Now it's a toss up in the Telegraph poll. Trump leads Harris by three points in North Carolina in the Rasmussen poll. Trump leads Harris by five points. This is a national poll overall. And then over at CNBC, their poll that was released yesterday. Yesterday was a busy day for polls. Trump up two points overall, and he's ahead on the economy. Um, Trump leads Harris 48% to 46% in the CNBC poll. Uh, This two-point edge is similar to that that the former president held over Joe Biden before Joe Biden dropped out. Now get this, though. By a two-to-one margin in the CNBC survey, Americans say that they will be better off financially under another Donald Trump presidency. That's key because we vote with our pocketbooks, most of us. And that's the reason I say that 50-plus age bracket these are the people who are the most responsible. These are the people who, uh, the, the younger, less than 30-something, a lot of them, they don't have the financial experience that others do. They don't have some of the debt. A lot of them, them they don't own homes yet. Uh, CNBC said, uh, quote, dramatic but offsetting changes beneath the surface for both sides that have kept the race even. The latest survey followed, of course, assassination attempt of Trump. Uh, Harris replacing Biden. Uh, It was conducted before we knew that progressive Minnesota Governor Tim Walz would be the vice presidential nominee. So uh, once they do this, redo this one, it'll be interesting to see how this may change. Again, we're going to get sick of polls, 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 polls. Hope you'll join the conversation today. 864-477-JOEY, 864-477-5639. Send your comments to the Furman Ford text line. You can leave a quick voice message, and your emails are always welcome, Joey, at joeyhudson.com. Speaking of the Furman Ford text line, you know, it's never been more important to support locally run businesses owned by people who actually live here in the upstate. Let me take a minute to talk with you about our friends at Furman Ford. If you're looking for a new vehicle, maybe a great pre-owned vehicle, one you you can trust, or maybe you're looking to order that special vehicle. Uh, Either way. If you want a new one, a brand new one, or a pre-owned that you can trust, the, the folks at Furman Ford, they're there to help you. Their name is on the sign because their name is on the line because every single tra- transaction is important to them. Jim Furman, Matthew Furman. They do business the right way. When you uh, stop by, when you give them a call, or maybe when you just uh, send them a quick email, you're always going to have access to a member of the Furman Ford family. And by the way, they also offer great service, and you're not going to have to wait weeks and weeks to get it done. And you do not have had to purchase your vehicle at Furman Ford. doesn't even have to be a Ford. They they service all makes and models. Visit my friends at Furman Ford online at FurmanFord.com, FurmanFord.com. Two U.S. astronauts currently stranded in space after their Boeing spacecraft encountered serious problems are going to be stuck up there a while longer. NASA scientists are currently working on a contingency plan to bring uh, Barry Wilmore and Sunita Williams back from what was intended as an eight-day mission to the International Space Station. It's now been 54 days since they were supposed to come home, and NASA is struggling to come up with a solution alone. Now, boy, that would be a horrible feeling, wouldn't it? I I got a little antsy when I got stuck in Israel a few years back because my passport was stolen and I couldn't come home for a, a, a couple of days. I had to, uh, had to get a new passport. Senator Tim Scott's office helped me do that. So I was a little antsy then, but boy, can you imagine being stuck on this space station, uh, up there for 54 days now and you can't get home. Wow. <laughs> 
course, I guess they train for this. You know, I guess um, an astronaut wants to be in space, right? But I'd be a little panicky uh, if NASA is struggling to come up with a solution. I'd be a little bit panicked. And, and how much food do they keep up there and, and water? How long can they stay up there? Uh, I guess I guess I'm uh, just thankful that I'm just a loudmouth talk, talk radio host and uh, not an astronaut, right? All right, so I got a I got a question for you. Should local governments be in the business of telling businesses the size of the American flag that they're allowed to fly at their place of business? A major RV retailer is again, and this is not the first time they've been put in this position, finding themselves fighting a local municipality, this is in Northern California, over its right to display a huge American flag. Camping World RV Sales in San Joaquin County, California, like many of the company's other 250 locations, flies a giant American flag over its grounds. You can't miss it. It's huge. Uh, it, it was stopped in April when the county ordered the dealership to remove the flag, citing safety reasons and a lack of permission. Now, what could be unsafe about an American flag? I don't care how big it is. The county said in a statement to the local uh, Fox 40 outlet, Camping World's flagpole was installed with neither a building permit nor planning approval. Therefore, they're in conversation with the Code Enforcement Division. Oh, so now we're getting into codes. What what could you possibly, what kind of code would you possibly need to put a flagpole up? Now, yes, granted, it's a big one. has to be a big one. Um, Camping World, you know, they went through the same thing up in North Carolina. Was it like maybe near Statesville or somewhere where the, the city or the county tried to keep them from uh, flying their giant flag up there? Well, they they lost that one. The city did. Camping World, you can you can go up, I guess, would that be Interstate 40, maybe? Or 70, I forget. Anyway, you, you can go up the interstate near Statesville, and you see it from miles away. It is beautiful. So back, back to California, the county feels the flagpole could be dangerous, they say, because of its closeness to property lines and the highway. Now, Camping World CEO Marcus Limonis disagreed and ordered the flag to be reinstalled at the location on Monday. He's Marcus. Now, have you, do you know Marcus Lamonis? He's the, uh, he's the reality TV star, uh, where he goes around and, and, and tries to help small businesses. Uh, he's a smart guy. He, he may even be a billionaire. I'm not quite sure, but he, he's pretty rich. Um, Lamonis told Fox 40, if we felt like we were putting people in danger or causing any issues with air traffic, which would absolutely not be okay, then I wouldn't do it. Lamonis argued the flagpole was secure and set deeply in the ground. If it were any other flag but the American flag, he would have no problem taking it down while the permit issues were being resolved, he said. However, he feels strongly about keeping the American flag up no matter what. He said, it's the symbolism about how we feel about this country. We have a lot of veterans who work for us and a lot of veterans who shop with us. I happen to be an immigrant. I was given the blessing of being able to enter this country and become a citizen, and I'm grateful for it. It's been part of my life since I was a little child down in Miami, Florida, where we had the largest flagpole in Miami at our car dealership. He said, uh, after publication... San Juan County said in a statement that the flagpole at this location exceeded the height permissible without a building permit. However, they denied asking Camping World to remove the flag itself. The county also said that after a review, a building permit would be issued for the flag, flagpole on Thursday. See, he stared them down. <laughs> uh, again, if you've ever watched this guy's, uh, his, uh, and I forget the name of it, but... Um, this reality show that he does, he's a sharp guy. Um, the statement from the county said, the 2022 California building code adopted by San Joaquin County requires a building permit for a flagpole over a certain height. The Camping World 
uh, flagpole is 130 feet in height and therefore requires approval by the zoning administrator and a building permit. Due to the proximity of the pole to Interstate 5, the San Joaquin County Community Development uh, Department consulted with Caltrans regarding concerns if the pole fell, it could land in the Caltrans right away for Interstate 5. Based on that, the zoning administrator and building official have reviewed the site plan and engineer plans for the flagpole. CDD recently made a determination that the flagpole may be permitted and a building permit will be issued. So they're backing down, as they should. But still, the, the, the larger issue here is, should there, I mean, th- does it matter how big a flagpole is? Should, should, fl- uh, should uh, flagpoles be subject to local building codes? Should you have to get a permit to put a flagpole up to fly the American flag? Th- this is just a, an, an example of the frustration that people around this country are dealing with right now with government at every level. Who was it this past week that talked about uh, that too much government? Oh, it was one of the Supreme Court justices saying that we had too many laws and that Congress, um, he, he, my word's not his. Basically, Congress should take a break <laughs> uh, because they're passing too many laws, which is putting undue burdens on the American public. And he's, it's true. It's like you got all of these various levels of government from from Congress down to local city councils and and local boards and commissions. All they want to do is come up with a solution for sometimes situations that are not even really a problem. They're creating a problem to come up with a solution. And when you start demanding certain things for a flagpole, to fly the American flag? Look, they, they picked the wrong fight when they picked on on uh, Marcus because he thrives on this type of thing. He loves a good fight, and he's got the money to back it up. I mean, you know, I'm sure when he found out about this, he told his, his folks at the dealership, put it back up, I'll pay the fine. He, he doesn't care about the fine. That's it for today's edition of Just the Truth. Thanks for joining me in the PhD Weight Loss and Nutrition Studio. To lose weight for the last time, visit myphdweightloss.com. If you haven't joined our mailing list yet, visit my website, joeyhudson.com. Just click on the Connect with Joey button so that you can receive our emails and the most up-to-date news. Also, find me on YouTube. Be sure and like, subscribe, uh, follow me on my YouTube channel. Just search for Joey Hudson. Appreciate you spending a few minutes of your day with me. Be sure and forward this edition of just the truth to some friends just click on the share button send it to a few of your contacts because if we're going to build our community and if we're going to win in november we got to build an army of conservatives the way we beat joe biden is through educating people and no better way than encouraging them to listen to just the truth hey keep those comments coming via the Furman ford text line 864-477-JOEY 864-477-5639 your emails always welcome as well joey at joeyhudson.com don't forget to take advantage of the my pillow special 25 dollars for the my towels six piece towel set when you use promo code joey just go to mypillow.com always use promo code joey we're back again tomorrow hope you will be too remember god's got this he's still in control